Hello and welcome to Natural Informant Weekly. I'm Danny Curtin. Thank you for joining me today. Our top story this week is a fascinating one. A Massachusetts man is recovering comfortably at home after he received the world's first pig kidney transplant. Richard Slayman, 62, was suffering from end-stage kidney disease, and he had been undergoing dialysis treatment several times a week for years. Doctors that performed the surgery said that Mr. Slayman's new kidney could last for many years, but they also highlighted the unknowns of any first-of-a-kind type of surgery. But after years of failing kidneys and ill health, Mr. Slayman couldn't be happier. After leaving the hospital, he said, quote, I am leaving today with one of the cleanest bills of health I've had in a long time. I'm excited to resume spending time with my family, friends, and loved ones free from the burden of dialysis that has affected my quality of life for many years. Scientists at the hospital partnered with biotechnology company eGenesis to genetically edit the kidney for transplant, which was a multi-year process that removed harmful pig genes from the organ, while also adding human genes into the kidney to increase its compatibility with the recipient. Doctors are hoping that this breakthrough will offer a lifeline to millions of patients worldwide who are suffering from chronic kidney disease and eventual kidney failure. Of all organs, kidneys are the most in demand. The NIH predicts a possible doubling of the amount of patients with end-stage kidney disease by the year 2030. But if you'd rather avoid kidney disease and the possibility of being next up on the pig kidney transplant list, there's new incredible research coming out of Taiwan on the effects of N-acetylcysteine and its ability to stop the progression of chronic kidney disease while potentially improving overall kidney health. You may be familiar with N-acetylcysteine, the somewhat controversial dietary supplement more commonly known as NAC or NAC. The study investigated the effects of NAC on patients that had later staged chronic kidney disease, which is a prevalent condition characterized by the gradual loss of kidney function. The end stage of the disease often necessitates dialysis, a rigorous treatment that filters the blood outside the body, which takes the place of some, if not all, kidney function. Most people undergo this treatment at least three days a week for up to five hours, while others undergo shorter two-hour treatments, but they do this on a daily basis. Modalities that are able to slow down the progression of chronic kidney disease and reduce the need for dialysis would improve the lives of millions. In this study, patients with chronic kidney disease at a minimum of stage 3 through stage 5 took 600 milligrams of NAC or a placebo twice daily for three years. The patients who took NAC compared to those who did not had much better overall kidney function throughout the trial. The primary endpoints of the study measured both SCR and EGFR blood levels, two of the most common kidney function tests. Since all participants had at least stage 3 kidney disease, their overall kidney function did decline over the three-year period. However, those that took NAC had a significant slowdown of the progression of the disease. For example, the EGFR levels dropped by 30% for those that did not take NAC, while there was only a 9% decrease for those that took NAC. Researchers concluded that NAC has the potential to not only slow down the deterioration of kidney function in chronic kidney disease patients, but also to lower their risk of progressing to end-stage renal disease. The difference between living a normal life or requiring dialysis and an eventual kidney transplant. Wow, what an amazing ingredient. Unfortunately, NAC is on a long list of highly effective dietary supplements, and nothing makes government regulators want to regulate more than cheap, effective natural products that do so much good, which is exactly what's going on right now in Canada. Health Canada, the Canadian version of the FDA, wants to start regulating dietary supplements just like over-the-counter drugs. The authorities say dietary supplements bore unauthorized health claims and that these new regulations will protect consumers from dangerous ingredients. But is protecting the health of Canadians what Health Canada is really after when the overwhelming majority of hospital visits for these products stem from choking on a pill or ingesting too much caffeine? I don't think so. Just like in the USA, government regulators receive much of their budget from pharmaceutical companies, which is more than happy to over-regulate any potential competition. In this scenario, 
Health Canada intends to regulate supplement companies far more expeditiously, and they would require the dietary supplement companies to pay for these new regulations themselves, which, in my view, is a backhanded way of banning supplements, especially for those made by small businesses that can't afford these new fees. You don't need to ban a dietary supplement when you can just regulate it into oblivion. If you live in Canada and you'd like to fight these new regulations, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a week of the news you need to stay healthy. Again, I'm Danny Curtin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.